What is up, guys? This is Jared Spalding here, and today I'm going to be talking about um, so just some tips for buying and selling on eBay. And so I'll be going over both today. And of course, what I mean is buying and selling coins on eBay, and that's why the video is titled with that, not just buying and selling in general, because I don't, you know, I don't know too much about buying like electronics or selling them on there, how to find the best deals with that. But I do know how to find the best deals when buying you know, silver on eBay or lots of coins in general, things I've done before. And I also know how to sell, you know. I have a decent amount of experience. I've sold a decent amount of stuff through eBay. Not, you know, anything insane or anything, but just a little bit of, just mainly to buy silver. I've sold stuff on there. But I'm thinking, think, if I can speak, what I was going to say is <laughs> I've been thinking about, you know, buying and selling on there more and more. And there is some potential, but there's also some potential risks. So let's just, let's just get right into this, shall we? All right, so when you're buying, uh, you know, coins on eBay or silver, or yeah, just coins in general, really, you know, there's a few things you're gonna want to know. First of all, do not buy the first thing you see, okay? And the reason being is because, you know, when you let's say let's say um you were to take this coin right here, right, and this is a Spanish coin, eighteen oh one. Can't really see it because the quality on this camera is not. I mean, that's too bad, but I mainly can't see it because I have my brightness turned all the way down. But you guys can probably see it a little bit better than me. And I can kind of get it in the light. Hold on. Um, but basically, if you were to look at that coin on there and try to buy it, you'd have to pay. I mean, usually I see them for around 50 bucks up on eBay. So let's say you even you say you know well no I found a good deal I found it for forty five dollars now I'm gonna buy this thing eighteen oh one is looking real nice well you wanna know how much I paid for that coin right around eight dollars and sixty cents and how I did that it was pretty simple it's called of course the auction and I know they're not as instant as you know buying something just directly but at the same time you know you have to realize that. You need patience when you're going to be investing in silver or just investing in newsmatically valuable coins in general. You know, you can't expect to just overnight find the best deal ever because that's not the way it works, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's really just not the way that it's going to be, especially on eBay where, you know, a lot of people will overvalue their coins, not undervalue them. So you have to really look for that good deal. And if you are doing buy it now, make sure that you are looking at every item up there because chances are none of them are going to be a good deal, but there might be one that happens to stick out as a good deal. You know, if something's for a good price, someone doesn't know the value, but when someone's selling something, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time on eBay, they know what the value is because they've sold on there before and they're used to selling coins. It's not like you just met somebody and you're just having to talk them into selling you some, you know, some coins that they got passed down from their parents and they have no time to research. When someone's pulling off something online, I'm not saying everybody's that careful, but a lot of people are going to be careful enough to at least know decently what it's worth. And if anything, you know, when they see an old year or something, they're going to automatically overvalue it and be like, well, 1801 and it looks like this? I thought it would be blank. It must be worth $1,000. And, you know, obviously it's not worth anything close to that, so you'd be, you know, they're going to be selling it for way over what the price should be. You know, when someone sees something like that, they don't realize the whole, uh, they don't realize the fact that there are other coins from that year that look probably better than that one, many coins from that year, and they don't really understand the basics of, you know, valuing your coins, so they're going to overvalue them before they'll undervalue them, and that's when you really can't get a good deal. Like, for example, I saw somebody, they had a lot of wheat pennies up, right, and it said rare old pennies, what it was called? And it was like 40 coins, and they're all from like the 40s and 50s, and they were doing an auction, and they started the auction at $1,500. And I went and looked at every single date, and I think all together, the coins were, I would probably value them at right around $4, $5 maybe on a good day, because all of them were super common years for wheat pennies. They're all, you know, late 40s to 50s, and you know, worth maybe 5 to 10 cents a piece, you know, you know and... I don't think anybody fell for it. I didn't get any bids, which thankfully, because it would be pretty bad to get that ripped off. But my point being, people, you know, like I was saying, will overvalue stuff before they undervalue it. And I've never seen someone undervalue something so massively like that, you know, by that same amount of percentage. Because if someone did, that'd be great for you. I mean, but most people aren't going to do that. So that's when you have to, you know, really put the time and patience into looking for, you know, the auctions 
more than anything else, where as long as there's no reserve on them, of course, and you realize that the you know the seller's pretty trustworthy, so that I'm just gonna cancel the auction at the last minute or something. You know, as long as everything you know is in your favor, then you should probably be good on that. I would think. You know, and just make sure that you know the person's not gonna be canceling the auction that like I was saying or anything like that, and nothing you know, shady's going on with the coins. But make sure there's not a really bad reason why the coins are going for so cheap. Make sure you know what who you're dealing with at least a decent amount to the point where you, know, you making sure that you're not gonna get scammed, but at the same time you're still paying a good price. And like I was saying, I paid some. I mean, I paid some good deals for or paid some good prices for everything here. You know, pretty much. I mean. This coin I paid like fourteen bucks for, at least nineteen twelve S, which is semi key. Paid forty two forty five for the eighteen thirty two. Anyway, this one was actually given to me. I did not buy that myself, so I'm pretty sure that the price there is what they actually paid because they bought it at a coin shop for me. But this, you know, saying I paid like under nine dollars for. This was also given to me, and this I paid twenty four, I think, and this I paid forty four, which I know is a little high to pay for this coin. It's probably valued at around sixty. In that condition with the slab on it, but so I know it was a little high to pay, but everything else pretty much I got a good deal. And this one I bought, you know, a little bit earlier in my investing days, and so I wasn't really as good at looking for good deals. So, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna lose on it, but definitely I know now I wouldn't be paying twenty dollars for that, and I probably wouldn't even buy it graded because that's when it is gonna cost a decent amount. So, but anyway, yeah, honestly. If you, as long as you, you know, sit around for at least, I mean, I'd say at least a week it'd probably take to find a really good deal, but as long as you got a decent amount of time to put into it, and, you know, you're willing to put that time in, you're not, you know, thinking, oh yeah, I'll just spend, you know, a few minutes and I'll find some amazing deal. As long as you're willing, willing to put the time and effort into it, you can find some really good deals on coins, and with uh, generic bullion, I don't think it's going to happen too much because it's really, really easy to find out the value of your generic bullion. You know, you can just look out the melt value of your silver and price it based on that which is really simple to do so most people won't undersell and when it goes up for auction it always you know is bid up to a point where you're not gonna be able to make any money off of it so I'm not saying don't buy a generic bullion I've got you know I've got it myself but I'm just saying that you're not gonna find too good of a deal now when you're selling on eBay I also have a few tips for this because like I said I have bought more than I've sold you know I haven't resold everything I bought or anything and I've bought more in value of stuff that I have sold on eBay, so I know a little bit more about that, but I did recently sell a decently large item on there, and I've sold before, so, you know, mainly wheat pennies, but I've sold buffalo nickels and v-nickels, and then just some random items also, but basically, I, I do have a few tips for this as well. For one, you make sure you're using very good keywords, you know, not just words that seem very enticing or draw people in, because that's always good, but also words that are going to be searched more frequently and will come up more frequently. You know, it's kind of like using AdSense on, um, on you know, for, through Google or whatever um, to find out the most you know, common search terms for YouTube videos and then trying to title them based on that to get the most you know, traffic to them. It's kind of similar to, like, to that whole premise where, you know, you want to, be finding using keywords that are going to be searched up a lot so that your item actually comes up more because even if you have this amazing item up for sale if nobody finds it then there's gonna be nobody bidding on it and speaking of bidding I would pretty much always recommend putting it up an auction because when you try to sell something whatever you think something's worth chances are when you're just starting out you're gonna overvalue so that your stuff or you're gonna undervalue you're pretty much never gonna get it just on that right value where you know, you aren't going to be selling for too cheap or too much because that's just, I mean, that's just how it is. Everybody's perception of something's value is a little bit different. And while, you know, there's general consensus on obviously the value of um, melt silver and stuff like that, you know, when it comes to coins, like I was saying, everybody's going to value it a little bit differently than someone else will. Even if a book will tell you the general value of a certain grade, when well, you're selling raw coins especially, you don't, you don't know what the grade is. It is really hard to determine a price point, and so when you're gonna throw something up there, and you know you're gonna price it, you might be pricing it either a thinking, oh well, I want to get this much for it, and putting it up accordingly, but then to nobody else it's worth that much, or there's nobody who happens to find it, or b, what could end up happening is 
you could sell, you could be like, oh, we know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to sell it for very much, so I'll just put it up for this much. It might actually, you know, be worth twice that to somebody, but then it quickly is snatched up, and those will be like, oh, well, I'll give you double what you're asking for. And, like, nobody's going to do that, obviously. So make sure that, you know, <clears throat> if you are going to put it up at a fixed price, and for one, I don't think that you're going to get nearly as much attention. But for two, I also don't think that you are going to be able to price it just right yet because you haven't really, I mean, if you haven't had any experience with selling coins, that is, unless you know the exact value or you do just already have put a lot of research into it, I guess then go ahead and go for it. But people are always going to try to talk you down. In an auction, you can't really do that. So that's why I always put up stuff for auction. And you know what? Sometimes, I mean, when you go with a no reserve auction starting at 99 cents, sometimes you lose and sometimes you win. I mean, that's the way it works. I have lost, I mean, I lost because, like, one time I put up a, uh, this Indian head penny, I'm trying to remember the year now, it was, it was a pretty good year, it was a semi-key date, and I think I ended up getting only, like, nine bucks for it when it was worth, like, closer to, like, twenty dollars, so, I did end up losing out a little bit on that coin, and I found it in a roll of Indian head pennies that I paid the equivalent of, like, fifty cents a coin for, I think it was... I think it was a roll that I paid about twenty dollars for or something, so still sixteen times what I paid for the coin. And I found other decent dates in there too, other semi keys, but you know that was probably the best one, and it did you know pay for almost half the roll, but still, you know it was kind of a, a little upsetting just because of the fact that it was you know I thought I was gonna get more, but then I sold this lot just a few days ago, and I think for everything in the lot because I bought. I own random lots of stuff, and I just kind of accumulated some random items, and I threw them all together, and I think over the over time, I mean, for I haven't really paid, like, too much for everything, but I think everything on the lot, I might have paid 60 bucks for, to like, or at least that's how much it'd be, around how much it'd be worth, but the lot ended up selling for just under 150 I think 147.50. so I did well on that, so that's what I'm saying, is you are taking a risk, but sometimes it will pay well, and sometimes it won't, so... That's what eBay is all about, though, when you're doing that type of thing, is you are taking a risk, and you have to, you know, assess the risk. And also, though, to minimize the chances of that, not only do you want to use keywords, but you want to throw in key items if you're going to be selling random lots. Because, like, I, for example, I put in silver bullion, but it wasn't anything major. It was 7 grams of silver total, and it was all, you know, obviously all fractional stuff. But I think that alone generated more value than it was actually ended up being worth. Just at least bringing people to the item... And to the fact, you know, or to the point where so many people came that ended up coming up before other items would. And it had brought up to generate the traffic a lot more. And I think it also got people bidding more, too, because they saw the silver bullion. And everybody who is investing in commodities, you know, when they see silver, or at least someone who's a beginner, especially when they see silver, they automatically, you know, have the jump on it, right? And there wasn't really any other silver in the lot at all, but... I ended up, I think, generating a lot of traffic. That's one really good thing to throw in always is silver bullion because that does bring in a lot of people. And if you're going to be selling, let's say, rolls of weight pennies, then I would just, you know, like, for example, let's say you're selling individual rolls of weight pennies, right? Title it, like, uh, 1909 through 1958. Um, one, or, like, yeah, roll of 19, 1909 through 1958 unsearched wheat pennies. Make sure you throw that unsearched in there, right? Because of the fact that even if you did search through them, nobody's gonna really know, and pretty much everyone says it. If you don't, if you if you say search, that's really gonna hurt your profit a lot. And I know you're probably thinking that seems really deceiving, but as long as you're giving them what you promise, I mean, they know they're taking a risk buying a roll because you could say, well, I don't know what's in that roll. I didn't know it was in there when I was sold it to you. I didn't search through it. And as long as you are giving them at least what you're promising of the 1909 through 1958 we pennies. You should be good, and, you know, it worked for me pretty well. I had already searched through, because I had thousands of wheat pennies before, which I know is not some super high amount to be selling with, but he was a, you know, start, and I wanted to sell him off to get some silver. And that's how I was able to, you know, purchase, I think, 160 silver nickels was with that um, money I had made from selling wheat pennies. And I had just done just that same thing, and I ended up, towards the end of the, um, I think the 30 days I had it up for, People started like coming in and being like, "Oh yeah, I'll buy ten rolls," and then, but they and the, what they did was they offered me like, I think three fifty per roll for ten rolls, right? And that was thirty five dollars for ten rolls, so not as good of a deal. But I ended up just accepting them because 
I was able to get it out in mass quantity, and I still would make more doing that than selling it for five dollars per roll to ten individual people and having to pay the shipping charges on ten rolls. That's still, you know, I would end up losing money that way. So selling out the ten rolls and losing a dollar fifty per roll or fifteen overall, it would cost a lot more in shipping than fifteen dollars. I can promise you that. So it ended up being worth it to me anyway, and I paid a lot less for that. I think I paid the equivalent of. For the one lot of wheat panes I got, there was a thousand of them. I paid the equivalent of two fifty a roll, and then the other lot I got, I paid the equivalent of a dollar eighty a roll. So definitely wasn't losing out or anything. I definitely still was making a decent profit on it, and I didn't have to pay too much for shipping either. Because even though it was heavy, I was able to use a priority box and pay like six dollars for the shipping or something five ninety five I think it was, and which is a lot less than that I'd have to pay if I shipped out ten individual rolls. So I still ended up doing pretty well on that. But honestly, yeah, when you're selling, make sure you're using keywords, make sure you're formatting it correctly, and honestly, just make sure you got something that people want, and, you know, if you, I think that you also have to know which market is, you know, really doing well at the time, because right now silver's down, so obviously I wouldn't recommend selling silver, or gold, or anything like that, but one thing that's doing pretty well right now, and is the numismatically valuable coins as in wheat pennies you know that's some that that's a market that's always doing pretty well and there's a lot of people jumping on there so since silver is not doing well right now i would suggest selling valuable maybe nickels you know what i mean like v nickels or buffalo nickels or that type of thing rather than silver and then using the money to either buy more or buy you know silver with depending on what you plan on doing so i hope you guys did find some at least some useful information in the video and that is it for this one peace love much respect